January 1st, 1943. Well, today is the first day of the year 1943. I wonder what it has in store for me. Wonder what it has in store for everybody. Wonder where I'll be the next year. Wonder when the war will end. At the Japanese American National Museum, a small book inside the words and sketches of a teenager, honest, raw, so simple, yet so meaningful. Without the ink, these old faded pages would be worthless, but the talented hand of a young Stanley Hayami has made them priceless. I just love looking through old stuff and finding things. Stanley is the uncle of Judy and Danny Hayami. Dan discovered the diary in the family's garage in 1976. It was just in an old brown suitcase with some telegrams and letters from the wartime. And I just opened it up and started reading it. Inside, the world of an innocent Japanese-American teenager during a frightening time. They haven't seen it since, uh, since they donated it to the museum. <laughs> He starts several with Doug on it. Yeah. <laughs> Things he forgot to do or meant to do. He's always worried about his, his grades. grades. I resolve to study as hard as I can and learn as much as I can so that when I am a man, I won't be a dumbbell. It feels kind of strange to be reading something that I know he was probably sitting in the barracks at a table with bad lighting, <laughs> writing about you know such day-to-day -day things, like normal things and knowing that the situation was far from what I would consider normal. Stanley grew up in the Los Angeles community of San Gabriel, had a bright smile and a positive energy. In 1942, when he was 16, he and his family were incarcerated at Heart Mountain. His personal thoughts, observations, fears, all splayed out on these pages. What is he talking about here? The weather. The cold wind blowing, people leaning, having to lean when they walk. Yeah, it was the wind, the, the cold, wind, yeah. cold, icy wind. They were not used to that living in San Gabriel. There was one passage I remember reading where he said his hair froze on the way to the mess hall. His hair was wet from his shower and he walked outside and he said, my hair froze. <laughs> While in camp, Stanley went to Heart Mountain High School, spent time working on the yearbook, but all along documenting his personal thoughts. I resolve to be more understanding of others and more appreciative. One of the things a person wants most is appreciation, so I want to give everyone as much appreciation as possible. And his resolution number one was, I resolve to be more tolerant, not only with family members, but with everyone. He was a sensitive, introspective person, so I think it's important that he was able to put that down on paper for other people to read. So where is he in his life in, in early 44? Is he still at Heart Mountain? Yeah. yeah. And they're graduating. Heart Mountain High School. Yeah. Oh, and those are his grades? His grades again. He got all A's. Within weeks of graduating, Sandley's life took another dramatic turn. He enlisted in the Army and became a member of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Suddenly, he found himself playing a role in ending that war he so often wrote about. His letters home from Italy, just like his diary, were filled with humor and optimism. And they were always signed, Love, Stanley. 